asking is a released and retained list. You know, it's one of those ones that fans look for at the end of a season, whether we're at the end of our season yet, is to is still to be seen. But can you just talk us through? Yeah, thoughts? obviously this season's been uh, totally different, and I've, I've been been delaying it for for a couple of reasons. To be honest with you, the season hasn't been officially curtailed. So I know there's been a few clubs that have, have let the sort of players know what sort of happening, and they've made the early decisions. And, and B is, is finances obviously play a massive, massive part. And uh, until you get clarity on a few issues, uh, I was never going to do it too early. I'd imagine uh, it'd, be, it'd be coming out middle of next week, maybe potentially. And when, as soon as we get clarity from the EFL, that we have definitely curtailed the season, and this is what's happening. And uh, as well as probably having an understanding when next season's maybe potentially going to look to start. So that's why there's been a delay in that process. And obviously my players will be the, the first ones to know about that. And then, then obviously we'll get it out in the public. And does that impact you, the, the possible, the, well, the eventual delayed restart? Does that you know, impact your return to training almost? Well, we've got plans. We've got plans ahead. If the, the season was going to kick off as it, as it would, the first week of August would be in on a certain date, and obviously, if the season is delayed a little bit, we we then work back. So basically, we we'd be looking at six week pre season pre season program for the normal kick off on August the third, which would be June the twenty second. If the season's delayed for whatever reasons, and then we'll be looking for an eight week pre season program because players have had a. Uh, a fair bit of time off and uh, the first couple of weeks the players won't be in full time and we're looking at different sort of things in the first two week period of the eight week period if that makes sense so we're well organised we've got a good, de decent coaching team we, we've had Zoom calls we, we know where we're heading and obviously when we get more clarity on dates and situations I'll, I'll be able to let the fans know a bit more and you spoke to the chairman and he said that uh, as part of this you know the teams that come out of this next season are going to be the ones who've handled this crisis you know, well. And I think as a team, whether that's coaching staff or the, the, the club in general, we've handled this crisis quite well, haven't we? I think everybody can be very, very proud of themselves. So starting all the way from the supporters to the players, they've done their bit to me staff, to the staff at the ground. Everybody's done their bit and we've really pulled together as, a, as, as what a football club we are. Uh, in, in the community as well, we've been doing great things in the community. So proud, proud to be manager really of a football club that's gone about its business the way we have. We've uh, we, we've all come together. Everyone's done their bit for the football club, and none more so than supporters with the season ticket sales and uh, and obviously some of the supporters not taking their the refunds and sponsors. So it's, it's been a massive team effort. And it's just great because. Clubs like ourselves, we, we're a massive community club, and everybody pulling together to help the football club in, the, in these times is, is massive. And it's been great working with a, with the chairman, the CEO, and, and Dan. Uh, it's just been great having an understanding and a clear of information being fed on a regular basis with, with Zoom calls and knowing where we stand, and then I can pass that information on to me, me staff and my players, and everyone has been kept in the loop, and that's all we can ever ask for, and everyone, like I say, pulling in the, in the right direction. I think one thing that's going to be completely different in a football season is the, the transfer market. I'm not going to ask you directly about that, but with youth players next season, they're going to play such a massive part, aren't they? Because Teams can't go out and bring 10, 12 players. In no, it's, it's never. It's gonna. I think it'd be ever changing depending on how the finances work out and when we can get playing in front of crowds. So with the with the, with the trend, I think it's going to be obviously a big wake up call in the, in a, in a lot of football clubs. I think we're in a quite fortunate position where we've got still quite a few contracted players for next season, and uh, we've got some good young talent that I think are going to grow as well. So we're certainly not going to be having a big, big transfer window. There won't be uh, too many players coming into the into the club and be working with a lot of what we've got, which is which is fine, no problem at all. I'm, I'm pleased with what we've got, and we'll add a bit of quality towards that. But uh, as regarding how the wages are going to look and potentially and how things are, it's anyone's guess. So, so as a manager, you, you 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 sort of bide in your time. But why, why I say that is, is we're buying our time in a quite a healthy position 
as in we have still got quite a few contracted players that for the last season, this season, however we want to call it, I think for the last 20 games we was a top seven team and the last 10 games we was a top three team in League Two, so we're looking to build on that. We had great momentum at the right time, ready for, ready for a challenge. You used to say we wouldn't have made the playoffs as well, I know it was an outside shot but it was still a shot my teams are, are, are renowned for finishing seasons well so we're hoping to keep a nucleus of, of what we've got together and, and kicking on